Hi everyone, I'm Charlotte and under the mentorship of Dr. Krista Todd, my research was on using the Deep Learning Tool Deep Lab Cut to analyze and compare the reproductive behaviors of the leech species Haruta rabana and Macrobella decor. So have you ever wondered what makes an animal walk or swim in a particular way or how you can move through your environment without much thought? At the core of these questions is the question, what is the biological basis of behavior? As a student of neuroscience, I'm interested in investigating these questions by looking at how the brain, nervous system, and hormonal system interact and evolve to produce all types of behavior. The first step to understanding these things is to really understand the behavior of interest itself. With behavioral analysis, through careful observation, we can identify an animal's individual movements and categorize them to be analyzed. With this data, we can look at the movements that make up a behavior, the duration of a behavior, and the transition frequencies between different behaviors. These things can be correlated to neuronal activity to show us how the nervous system produces different behaviors. Traditionally, behavioral analysis has been done through carefully recorded human observation. Even though this remains the standard in behavioral analysis techniques, it comes with the risk of human mistakes and biases. A great model organism to study the neural basis of behavior in are leeches. Leeches are annelid worms with 32 body segments. Their nervous system is easy to access and relatively simple as each body segment contains a bundle of neurons called a ganglion. While many behaviors of the leech have been well described, reproduction remains of interest because of the lack of literature on the subject. What we do know is that leeches are simultaneously hermaphroditic, meaning that they have both male and female sexual organs simultaneously as seen in this illustration. We also know that the hormone herudotocin a member of the vasopressin oxytocin family induces reproductive behavior. And while reproductive behavior is known to be difficult to study in the lab setting, thanks to the work of Wagner et al., we can induce fictive reproductive behaviors in the leech by injecting it with conopressin, an analog of herudotocin, the hormone I just mentioned. In the natural reproductive behavior, as seen here, the leeches will twist around each other until the female and male gonopores, or sexual organs, are precisely aligned. After copulation, the reproductive behavior will end by the leech thrusting its body to deposit an egg cocoon. When it comes to reproductive behavior in leeches, the species Heruta verbana, seen on the right, and Macrobdella decora, seen on the left, are of interest. These two species have been observed to exhibit similar reproductive behavior, which consists of lip flaring and a rhythmic stereotype twisting as seen in these videos. And while research shows that they have homologous lytic cells and likely produce the hormone herudotocin, previous research showed that the motor output for motor neurons involved in the leech's reproductive behavior was different between the species. This makes us wonder. If they have the same neurons, then how are they working together in different, different neuronal motor output? Before this can be answered though, the reproductive behaviors need to be better understood. To do this, a comparative quantification of these behaviors needs to be done. To do this, I'm interested in using a program that uses, utilizes machine learning to analyze animal behavior. With the advancement of technology, machine learning has enabled the development of new tools for behavioral analysis. One such tool is an open source software package called Deep Lab Cut, which utilizes deep learning, a type of machine learning that uses algorithms based on artificial neural networks. Deep Lab Cut allows researchers to train these networks in order to track animal movements and make 3D pose estimations, as shown on the slide without the use of invasive markers as traditionally done. The software works by having someone annotate body parts of an animal that are of interest, for instance, the head and tail, with colored markers and frames of a video. Deep Lab Cut then trains a network by shuffling the frames for a set number of iterations, which just means it repeats the process of shuffling the frames thousands of times so the software learns to locate the specific body parts. As seen in this image, the human annotated body parts are indicated by the crosshairs and the dots are where the software made predictions that the body parts are located after being trained. 
After the network is properly trained on a particular behavior, researchers can then upload new videos and have Deep Lab Cut analyze them by making predictions of body part locations. This data can then be analyzed to tell researchers about the position of various body parts at specific times throughout a video. This program has the ability to speed up behavioral analysis and make it easier to gather data and study behaviors difficult to analyze. Now that I have Deep Lab Cut working, these are the questions I want to answer. How well does Deep Lab Cut analyze the reproductive movements of a leech compared to human observation? What combination of training parameters and Deep Lab Cut are optimal for good generalization of leech reproductive behavior? And finally, is there a quantifiable difference between the durations of lip flaring, twisting, and cocoon depositing that make up the reproductive behaviors of Haruta Rabana and Macromdella decora. I expect that Deep Lab Cut will be able to predict animal movement within a range close to human variability. I also expect that the most optimal training parameters will consist of a high percentage of training frames and based on previous literature around 200,000 iterations of frame shuffling. And I hypothesize that Haruta Rabana and Macrobdella decora will exhibit courtship behaviors of lip flaring, body twisting, and depositing in cocoon for the same duration of time. To explore these questions, leeches will be provided by the Todd Lab at Westminster College. I will need specimens of both Haruta Rabana and Macrobdella decora. They will be kept in enclosures of artificial pond water and fed cow blood every six months. I will only perform experiments of leeches who have reached sexual maturity, which is determined by the size of the leech. As I mentioned previously, reproductive behaviors can be induced in a lab. To do this, I will be injecting both species of leech with the hormone conopressin, which as mentioned before, is an analog of herudotosin. I will then make video recordings of the leech's behavior and record my observations for about an hour. I use my first video to train Deep Lab Cut, and I will use subsequent videos for analysis. On the screen here is the workflow for Deep Lab Cut. As mentioned before, Deep Lab Cut uses annotated frames to train a network. Randomly selected frames are randomly divided into training and test sets called a training test split. A training set is shuffled to train the network on and the test set is used to test the trained network on to check that the network's predictions are correct. After training, the network is evaluated and the videos can be uploaded to be analyzed. To answer my first question, I use the default setting of 95% of the frames assigned to the training set and 5% to the test set. Someone blind to the parameters of the network, we'll call them the labeler, labeled 125 frames from a video I had recorded of a leech during fictive reproduction. The number of 125 frames was based on reported samples efficient enough to train a network on. The next step will be to have them relabel the same data to be compared. I will use the first set of labeled frames to train networks using different numbers of iterations. For each number of iteration, I will train the network three times to make further comparisons. To answer my second question, I will train a series of networks using different combinations of training test splits and different numbers of iterations to determine which combination is optimal for training a network on leech reproductive behavior. Once I determine those parameters, I will use the best trained network to analyze videos of both species during fictive reproduction. To analyze the data acquired, I will export all Deep Lab Cut tracked body part paths into MATLAB, which is a program that uses computations and algorithms to analyze large amounts of data. Data collected from the human labeled frames Deep Lab Cut Training Set and Deep Lab Cut Test Set will be used for comparisons to determine the efficiency of Deep Lab Cut to locate and label body areas of a leech compared to a human observer. To determine human variability, the difference between the first and second set of frames labeled by the labeler will be averaged for all body parts across 
pixels, which are indicated by x and y coordinates. Then I will compare the human variability to how far off Deep Lab Cut's predictions were from the actual marker in both the training and test set of frames. The image shown here shows that a train network doesn't always make good predictions. As in the labeled frame I showed you earlier, the crosshairs are where someone labeled the leech and the dots are where Deep Lab Cut made predictions. In this image, you can see that the predictions are slightly off in some cases, and sometimes no prediction is made at all. I will then compare each network trained with different parameters of training to test splits and number of iterations. The difference in what the model predicts the distribution of points to be and what the actual distribution is can be quantified and compared to determine which parameters create a model with the least amount of error. To compare the behaviors of each species of leech, I will use data gathered from the videos analyzed using the Determine Optimal Network. I will export the x and y coordinates in pixels corresponding to each body part, which will be measured within each frame to determine the duration of behaviors, such as swimming, twisting, cocoon depositing, and lip flaring, and to hopefully measure the angles of the leech's body twisting. These graphs show my expectations for determining the preciseness of Deep Lab Cut and determining the optimal parameters for training a network. These expectations are based on previous findings by Mathis et al. The first chart here shows what I expect the results to be comparing Deep Lab Cut's train networks to human variability. On the ordinate, root mean square error is a measurement of a model's error in making predictions. So the lower the root mean square error, the less error in marker predictions, which is what we want in a train network. Shown here, the dark lines represent the average of three trained networks, which are shown by the light-colored lines. I expect the error to decrease with more durations, as the error rate should decrease with more training. Deep Lab Cut should be able to surpass human variability during training. And as I've shown here, I expect the trained network to be able to make marker predictions very close to that of a human observer, as shown by the red test line. The second graph shows the expected results for comparing the networks trained with different parameters. The measures on the ordinate, the cross entropy loss, represent the distance between what the model believes the output distribution should be and what the original distribution really is. The lower the number, the better the performance of a trained network. I expect networks trained with a higher percentage of frames allocated to training than to testing to have less loss. As shown in this graph, the orange line represents my predictions for networks trained with 95% of the labeled frames assigned to the training set to have the best performance in making predictions of where segments of the leech are located. And as other studies have reported, I expect the loss to even out after about 200,000 iterations of training. Based on research by a previous student at Westminster College, this graph shows what my expectations for the percent of time that Haruta Verbana and Macrobdella decora will spend executing different behaviors during reproduction. While I expect most of the time the leeches will be lip flaring, resting, and twisting, I expect that both species will spend approximately the same percentage of time performing each behavior, which would show that the reproductive behavior is the same in both species. While my work is still in progress, we expect that with optimized parameters, Deep Lab Cut will refine the acquisition of data concerning leech reproductive behaviors by making it faster and more efficient without the risk of human error. Understanding the intricacies of the leech's reproductive behavior can help to inform its neural basis. If my expectation about the efficiency of Deep Lab Cut holds true, then it would show that Deep Lab Cut could be used to analyze other ethologically relevant behaviors of the leech. It also opens the door for other possibilities as it can likely be trained for use with other annelids of interest and be used in conjunction with behavioral clustering tools like Motion Mapper. Future directions of this work are to first finish the project. After that, Deep Lab Cut 
could be used in conjunction with electrophysiology to correlate the leech's reproductive behavior with nervous system activity. Another interesting avenue to explore would be to compare the natural and induced behaviors, which are induced by herudotocin, compared to conopressin. I'd like to thank Westminster College in conjunction with the McNair staff and program for providing me the opportunity and support to conduct research this summer. My mentor, Dr. Krista Todd, and everyone from the Todd Lab whose work laid the foundation for this project. I'd also like to thank my fellow McNair scholars for all of their help and support this summer. Thank you very much.